The Bible teaches many valuable truths about God, His nature, His perfections, and His being. But that is not all it reveals about Him. There is a mystery in God that is not scrutable, and that goes beyond of the highest human intelligence. In this video, with the help of God and some serious existing studies on this subject, let us try to shed light on the Trinity. Please remain attentive and try to extract yourself from a purely human reasoning. But what is exactly the Trinity? The word is not in the Bible. However, the concept is expressed there several times. Trinity comes from the Latin word Trinitas and is expressed for the first time by Tertullian, who was an early Christian author. Tertullian wants to express the fact that God is at the same time one and three, a three-personal being. Some of us, including myself, often try to use physical illustrations to describe the Trinity, such as the fact that H2O is the form of liquid, water, solid, ice, and gas, vapor. <laughs> Even if it is a try, a first try, it is far from being enough to explain the identity and the personality of God. To understand what is the Holy Trinity, let's first look at what it is not. Don't be discouraged, because there is actually a model that makes the essence unique with three personalities. This unique essence is called usia. The word usia comes from the Greek and means substance. We would rather say essence. And the three personalities are called hypostasis, which also comes from the Greek upostasis. This model is called the relative identity. It maintains that three things or three beings can be identical in one aspect, but distinct in another. In the case of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are the same God, but different persons. The identity concerns the divinity. The difference concerns the personality.
it is important to note that as humans, the love that a husband has for his wife, and vice versa, is imperfect, as well as the love they have for their child, and vice versa. Whereas the love between the persons of the Holy Trinity is unconditional, fusional, in perfect agreement, in very, and truly perfect. This is the difference between the love between human beings and the love of God. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 13, Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God says to Moses, I am who I am. By saying so, God manifests his perfect self-awareness. Each of the three hypostases, that is to say, each of the three persons, brings full self-knowledge to one another. Thus, each apostasis can know the divine essence, usia, of the others and of its own, that is, the full self-consciousness. God is independent, which means the basis of his existence is in himself. As independent, he is not only independent in himself, but he also makes everything and everyone depend on him. For God to be perfect, it is necessary that there are several persons in himself, three consciousness in only one being. You might ask yourself why three and not four or five or more? Well, the answer is quite easy. It's a question of balance. For there to be perfect love, at least three people are needed. Indeed, for the consciousness, at least three persons are necessary. But more than three is superfluous. It brings randomness and imperfection. There are thus three relations in God between the three hypostases. Fatherhood, Sonship, Spiration. Our Sovereign God. The Father is the initiator of all action. The Son is the action and the revelation. The Spirit is the motivator. An example of one of our actions in, through, and for God can be found in the baptism. In Matthew chapter 29, verse 19, it is written, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I accept, I receive, I proclaim. See, Christians are often attacked about the Trinity. Christianity has been accused of being in reality a polytheism. Because a unique God in three persons is beyond comprehension, for those who do not get rid of their purely human and therefore narrow reasoning. Some believers who have not taken the time to question the nature of God might feel confused and disarmed when they are faced to ignorant accusers. Yet the love and truth that flows from the Trinitarian communion is the proof of the divine perfection. Hallelujah.